I surveyed parents over a three-year period who attended my parenting workshops. The survey asked them what was their biggest complaints about their kids that brought them out to hear me speak. Now, the top three complaints I received were they don't listen, they don't cooperate, and they talk back. Now, when I bring these results up at other parent groups, they agree. Parents are hungry for the solution to these common and frustrating problems. But I'm able to change their perception completely when I tell them that a very high percentage of these problems are actually a symptom of something else and something the parents can control. If you too are experiencing these same problems with your children, pay close attention. Now, as I reveal much of the cause of children not listening, a lack of cooperation and backtalk. So if you don't remember anything I tell you today, the most important thing that I want you to understand is what is causing the greatest degree of a lack of cooperation? It's the kids don't feel connected strong enough to the primary caregivers, whoever that is. And I believe that we were all put on this earth to connect. We're supposed to be in families, in groups, in teams, in clubs. We are a species created to be with each other. And children, whether they're three or 13, desire, they have this high desire, although you guys might, might disagree with me, I think, but they really want our parents to listen to us. We want them to pay attention to us. We want them to care about us. We want to be important. And that's what we, and I say we as children, really want. Children crave to want their parents to really be there 100%. The worst thing we can do is to be talking to a child when we're on an iPhone or a smartphone or on a telephone or things like that. So before we start getting jabs at each other in the audience here, uh, the, the primary thing that we need to understand about reconnecting children is when children have been away from the primary caregiver for an extended period of time, perhaps overnight is one, and all day at school. And what we found, what researchers have found is that when kids wake up in the morning, they want to check back in. It's almost as if they have a plug and they just want to plug back into mom or dad, whoever the primary caregiver. And it can be a grandparent, it can be a step-parent, whoever your primary caregivers are. They, they just, they crave to plug back in. They just want to know that they, they're important, that, 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 that they exist, that you can hear them. A mom came to me one time and she said, you know, I'm having this problem with my kids. And every morning they begin to fight at the breakfast table. They're four and six and I can't stand it. I'm ready to sell my kids to the zoo. And she said, tell me, please tell me and help me. What can I do to stop this kind of fighting when it happens in the morning? So one of the things we need to understand is, is that kids just want to plug in. And if they don't feel like they're plugging in and they don't feel like the parents are paying attention to them, then misbehavior can break out. And it also can come out as a result of, or appear to be, fighting and sibling rivalry. So again, back to this mom, she's got a four-year-old and a six-year-old and they fight at the breakfast table. And I asked her, I said, mom, when this fighting breaks out, tell me what is going on with you. Tell me what's going on in the house. And she said, well, you don't seem to understand what it's like to be a single mom raising kids, but I'm loading the dishwasher, I'm putting in a load of wash, I'm making lunches, I'm folding clothes, I'm trying to talk to my boss on the phone, I'm trying to set up uh, childcare, and it is crazy. And I, was, I could feel the stress coming from this mom explaining this situation to me. So I said, here's my solution. Here's what I think is gonna resolve this issue. I want you, starting Monday morning, I want you to sit down at the breakfast table with your boys and I want you to set a timer for 10 minutes, just 10 minutes. And during that 10 minutes, you are to sit at the table with them and you cannot speak. Your only job is to communicate through your facial expression. That means a lot of smiling and nodding. Just 10 minutes. All I ask is for 10 minutes of your time to sit with them at the breakfast table. And because you've got a four-year-old, you may have to tell them in advance that you're going to do this. Because when you're dealing with a four-year-old, if you decide to stop talking all of a sudden, they may freak out. So it's a good idea with young children to say, this, look, this is what I'm gonna do. I know this sounds really silly, but starting tomorrow morning, what mom's gonna do is I'm gonna sit at the table with the two of you. Now, this mom said, you are kidding me. That's your advice? to sit for 10 minutes with my kids? And I said, yes. She said, it's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. 
Now, one of the things I wrote about in my book, Love Limits and Lessons, is that the, the, it's so important for us to plug in and connect with our kids. And especially with young children, you need to tell them in advance when you're going to do this. Well, what did the mom do? She got mad at me. She got mad, she got up and left and walked out. She wanted nothing to do with it. She thought it was the most ridiculous thing. Until about two or three days later, she was done being mad at me and she tried it. Two weeks later, she left me a voicemail and apologized for her behavior because she suddenly saw instant results. Now, did the fighting and arguing go away? No, but it got to a tolerable, normal level of arguing and bickering that no parent can stop. It's absolutely normal. When our kids start an episode of sibling rivalry, you gotta understand that they didn't pick that sibling. They're being forced to love them and live with them. And also you gotta understand is even kids in the tween years and teen years, we, you know, when we're kids, we wanna be special. And then we suddenly discover we have to fight for mom or dad's attention with this other kid. And that can be a big problem and can cause a lot of sibling rivalry. So I tell parents, rule number one with sibling rivalry, the fight belongs to them, not to you. Your job is to make sure they're gonna be safe and that you can tolerate the noise. So back to this whole connection thing. Connecting with kids is one of the easiest things we, we can do and the most powerful, but we don't often think about it. Now let's talk about the end of the day when you're picking kids up from school or they're coming home from school or when you come back together as a family, as a unit, they need that same kind of thing. That's why I urge parents, first thing in the morning, after school, you do not have a vocabulary. In fact, it's okay to just not say anything because the kids don't care what you're gonna say in those first few minutes. They just wanna know that you care. They wanna know that you're, you're still there for them and they're still number one. So the best thing you can do, and, I, and it sounds really odd, but don't speak. Actually commit to not talking. Don't pick anything up. Don't get distracted with smartphones or iPhones or televisions. It's so important that we actually help them feel connected. Now, come on, as an adult, all right, as an adult, how many times have you felt yourself or seen yourself in a relationship with another adult, say your significant other, and have you ever found yourself wanting to just go, do I matter? Just slow down for a minute. Can you shut the TV off for a little bit? Put that newspaper down, and I just want you to hear what I have to say. So this connection is more important than ever. And what parents don't seem to realize is that if you allow your child to plug back in, to reconnect with you, it actually does away with a lot of need for them to act out and misbehave. Because a lot of challenging behaviors that parents are dealing with is actually communication. When your children are acting out and misbehaving, they're actually trying to tell you something. They're trying to say, oftentimes, I don't feel like I'm important here. I don't feel like I matter. And they crave to have that reconnection. So look for opportunities when your children have something to say, when they've been away from you for an extended period of time, and take a moment to just set things down and let them feel like they're important. Now, remember, I said that it doesn't have to be any extended period of time, 10 minutes, five minutes, give them something like that. And notice the difference in their behavior when you start doing that. Now, I wanna add one other thing. A part of that connection is also they need to be encouraged. Children throughout the day are getting so many negative messages. And a lot of those negative messages are sit down, keep quiet, don't touch that, leave that alone, get off of there. And this goes on throughout the day. In fact, I heard of a study once done where they, they, uh, they surveyed children on the number of messages they got throughout the day. And the number came up to 433 negative messages per day. How many positive messages did they get? 32. It world is moving so fast that it's so easy for us just to kind of forget about that and be so fast with our life moving so quickly that we're rattling off and firing off commands and demands. And I don't fault parents. It's hard being a parent today. It's incredibly difficult. It just if we if we calm down and slow down a little bit more. If we breathe deeply, amazing things happen. And I know it sounds weird, but when we breathe deeply, more oxygen goes to your brain and allows you to think more clearly and be able to react in situations. Now, the other part of the whole encouragement thing is not only the negative messages, but 
but the message that they get that they constantly are reminded that they're not tall enough, they're not big enough, they're not small enough, they're not smart enough, and, and it goes on. We need to make as many deposits in their emotional bank account if you can. And that means take time to listen, uh, take time to ask them to show you something. If, uh, if they've created something, the best thing you can do is say, how did you create that? I wish I had that kind of ability. And to acknowledge in our children the special gifts that they have because each of them are individuals and they're not the same as us. They're not blueprints or duplicates of us. They are individuals. And the best thing we can do as parents is allow that to shine through and to acknowledge it and to stop for a moment and say, how did you know how to do that? Will you teach me how to draw a picture like that? And of course, when you're your parent dealing with tweens and teens, a lot of times they'll say, that's silly, mom. And your job is to say, I know, but show me anyway. And to add more encouragement, less discouragement to the children in your home, and you'll begin to notice a change in their behavior, more cooperation, less back talk, and they'll be listening to you a little bit extra because why? Their needs are getting met. There's no need for them to try to act out and say their needs aren't being met. So now you have the solution for getting your kids to listen better, cooperate more, and talk back less. Once you've accomplished this, you're going to be more successful with the next parenting skill that so many parents desire. My guests and I will be sharing that advice after this short break, so don't go away. We'll be right back. <music> 